fun. Put your name, put your full name. Oops, that's not how you type my name. Next. All right. Okay. So our first task is to write the conditional statement as an if then statement. So we're going to write it as the proper conditional form. So the statement says, when it is raining, I use my umbrella. Can anybody, does anybody have an idea of what I should be typing here? If it is raining, then I need to use my umbrella? Yes. Okay. If it is raining, oh, I'm so sorry about the noise. <laughs> okay. If it is raining, I guess you'll still have to hear it. Then I use my umbrella. I'll give you guys some time to type it. Um, I think you guys have to type it very specifically with the comma after raining, okay? So I think Google Sheets or Google Forms will not let you submit it if you don't have a comma. I also don't know if it's case sensitive, so I would like you to use capital I for if, okay? And capital I for I use my umbrella. So capital I for if it is raining, comma, then capital I use my umbrella. Do we have to put a period? Good question. So I'm looking at the answer key so I don't type it wrong. It looks like there's no period on the answer key, so delete my period. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Good question. We're just wanting to make sure that, because you know how Google Forms it won't let you submit it if you don't get the right one. Even though if you were writing it out and you put a period or you don't put a period, I don't care. Google Forms is very specific, so. All right. So if it is raining, comma, then I use my umbrella, no period. Next one. <laughs> Write the conditional statement as an if-then statement. Statement, I wear my coat when it is cold. Somebody, can somebody tell me what I should type? If it's cold, then I'll use my coat. Yes. If it's cold, then I wear my coat. I know, very specific. But if you wrote that on a test, I would say you're correct anyways, because you are. If it is cold, comma, then capital I, wear my coat. This time, the teacher put a period. We, we share our materials, so <laughs> yeah, put your period on this one. Capital I for if it is cold, comma, then capital I, wear my coat, period. Okay, but what you said earlier was absolutely correct. If it is cold, then I put on my coat. Correct, good. You guys are getting good using the conditional statements, if then. All right. Hopefully that was enough time to type it. Oops, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, <laughs> let's take a look at the next one. Write the conditional statement as an if then statement. Statement, two complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. What do you guys think? A little bit harder, huh? If two complementary angles add up, then they equal 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, exactly. But I want to phrase it the way, you know, the answer key is, okay? So yes, if two angles are complementary, then they add up to 90 degrees. Same meaning, but you're correct. <laughs> if two angles are Complementary. Oh, I spelled complementary wrong, so let me take that one. Complementary, comma, then they add up to 90 degrees, period. Okay, so I know you can't see all of that. Um, let me read it to you again. If two angles are complementary, make sure you spell it right, comma, then they add up to 90 degrees, period.
Let me do that one more time just in case. How do I do that? Oh, yeah, there we go. So capital I for if two angles are complementary, comma, then they add up to 90 degrees, period. So I just want to make sure you type it correctly so that you get the points. So I also had someone ask for number one. Number one is you just have to write it as an if then statement. So take a look over here. If, if it is raining, then I use my umbrella, okay? Okay. And then we are on the last one. Write the conditional statement as an if then statement. Statement. A right triangle has one right angle. So I'm going to just start with if. If. Okay, they wrote it very specifically. If the figure is a right triangle, then, then what? You guys can say it. Then it has one side not one side it says one what one right angle there we go yeah pretty close i'm pretty sure you meant to say that anyways it's okay <laughs> if the figure is a right triangle then it has one right angle and is there a period yes okay so let's recap because i type fast maybe okay from the start it says capital i for if if the figure is a right triangle, comma, then it has one right angle, period. Okay, give you guys some more time to type while I take a drink of water, because I talk so much. All right. Let's go to the next section. I'm going to click next. Okay. So now we're on a multiple choice, so it's a lot easier for us. We don't have to like type very specifically in order to hope we're correct. So for hypothesis and conclusion, what is the hypothesis in the conditional statement? Statement, if a figure is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So let me just remind you that the conditional statement is the part right after the word if. So what is our correct answer? Then the opposite sides are congruent. Right after the word if. Like literally, I don't know how to point because I can't point. <laughs> Oh, a figure is a parallelogram. There we go. A figure is a parallelogram. <laughs> yeah. Like literally right after the word if. So a figure is a parallelogram. That is our hypothesis. Good, good. And that's in your notes. It says hypothesis is the word directly, the phrase directly after the word if. And now we're on to the conclusion. So what is the conclusion in the conditional statement? If a figure is a parallelogram, then the opposite sides are congruent. So conclusion, to remind you guys, is the, is the words right after the word then. So what follows the word then? The opposite sides are congruent. Good. The opposite sides are congruent. Notice we don't include if and then in the actual hypothesis and um, conclusion is just the words after. So now we have the opposite sides are congruent. Okay, do you guys have any questions right now? All right, sounds like a no. <laughs> Let's keep going. What is the hypothesis in the conditional statement? Statement, if the angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. What's the hypothesis? if the angles form a linear pair. Good, except we don't want to use the word if, so exactly everything you said except for the word if. So the angles form a linear pair, all right? So hypothesis is 
the angles form a linear pair. It's the first half of it minus the word if. All right. Okay, let's go to the next one. What is the conclusion in the conditional statement? Remember the conclusion is the words following the word then. They are supplementary. Good, they are supplementary. So it's the second half of the statement, but we don't use the word then, so it's just they are supplementary. Okay, any questions on those? Okay, let's keep going then. What is the hypothesis in the conditional statement? Statement, if the line intersects a circle twice, then it is a secant. Which one's the hypothesis? The line, the line intersects a circle twice. Perfect. The line intersects a circle twice. So it's the first half for the hypothesis, except we don't use the word if. So just the line intersects a circle twice. And finally, what is the conclusion of that same statement? It is a secant. Good, so it's the second half, except we don't use the word then, so just, it is a secant. Does anybody have questions on this section? No. That's good. Anybody else have questions on this section? Okay, <laughs> I guess not then. Okay, let's go to the next section. Yes. All right. Converses and, wait, that's not right. Oh, I must have skipped ahead, oopsies. Okay, conditional statements. Statement, if a quadrilateral is a square, then it has four right angles. Is this statement true? You guys remember, does a square have four right angles? True. Yes, true, a square does have four right angles. Good, good. Now we have to write the converse. So remember, we're switching the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let me just first write if. Can somebody tell me the conclusion of this statement? What comes after the word then? It has four right angles. Good. If it has four right angles, except that's not very specific, so I'm going to write if a quadrilateral has four right angles. I'm just changing the word if to a quadrilateral because in English, you know, when you're speaking English language, you want to make sure you're specific about what it is. You can't just say it and just throw it out there into the sentence. So you got to be more specific. So this is like a little bit of an English thing. So if a quadrilateral has four right angles, comma, then, then what is our um, hypothesis in this statement? It is a square. Good, so officially it was like a quadrilateral is a square, but we already said a quadrilateral, so now we can say it. It is a square. And is there a period? Yes, there is. Okay, so let me recap. All we did was we switched. We put the hypothesis in the end this time and the conclusion in the beginning. So we have capital I for if. If a quadrilateral has four right angles, comma, then it is a square period. 
I'll say that one more time just because I know I type fast. So capital I, if a quadrilateral has four right angles, comma, then it is a square period. Okay. So they gave us the same statement again. If a quadrilateral is a square, then it has four right angles. Now they're saying, is the converse of our statement true? So we just wrote the converse. We said if a quadrilateral has four right angles, it is a square. Is that always true? Mm, yeah. Maybe, maybe it helps if I draw. So this is where it helps. Like, you know, when we were driving around those yellow dots on the homework until we had a quadrilateral? I'm gonna screenshot this. <laughs> yeah, it is false. So let me draw you a quadrilateral that has four right angles but is not a square. So here's our converse statement. I'm just gonna draw a picture of a quadrilateral with four right angles that is not a square. So we have here's a right angle, second right angle, third right angle, four right angles. This is a quadrilateral. It has four right angles but it is not a square. That is not a square, okay? So our converse is not true. Do you guys have questions? And for the two people that keep having internet issues, you can remind me which part you started breaking up on so that I can tell you, I can catch you up. <laughs> So I can recap for the statement. We have that if a quadrilateral has four right angles, then it is a square. And we just drew a picture where that is not true. So this answer is false. Because the question here is asking for, is the converse true? We wrote our converse. And then now we determined that our converse was false. Okay. Somebody else missed the first question here. The first question here is, not, is true. So the original statement is true, but the converse is false. That's what we've done so far. Okay, so let's go on to the next question. It says, statements, if a quadrilateral is a square, then it has four right angles. Is the statement biconditional? Remember, biconditional means the statement's true and the converse is true. We just said our statement is true, but our converse was false. So is so this biconditional? Biconditional. So it's not biconditional. Correct. It is not biconditional because our converse was false. This statement cannot be uh, biconditional if the converse is false. The converse and the statement must both be true in order for it to be biconditional. So no, this is not biconditional. All right, so somebody can't get the last page. I'm gonna, I guess, let me type to you. The first one's true. Then if, the, if a, oh gosh, I can't type for some reason on here. A quadrilateral has four right angles, and this is a square. Then the next one's false. Then the next one's no, not biconditional. Okay, now we're on to if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measures. Is this statement true? Congruent means you have equal measures, right? Yes. Yes. So this statement is true. It's true. We did. Good, good. True. Next, if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measures. What is the converse of this statement? So we're going to have to write this out. I'll start off by writing if. So what is our conclusion over here? 
they have ego measures. Yep. Except that we're going to switch out the word they because that's vague, right? We don't know what, what they are yet. So we know that they're talking about two angles. So if two angles have equal measures, comma, then. All right, now what is our original hypothesis? Then it is congruent. Good. So the original one says two angles are congruent, but we already said two angles, right? According to our English thing. So then we say, then they are congruent. And period. Okay, so let me go over that one more time. Okay, so capital I for if, if two angles have equal measures, then they are congruent, period. And I'll do that again. If, with a capital I, if two angles have equal measures, comma, then they are congruent, period. So all we did was we switched the statement and the hypothesis, and you guys are getting really good with that, so proud of you. Good job. Okay, then we have the next one. Statement, if two angles are congruent, then they have equal measures. Is the converse of this statement true? So we just wrote our converse. Let's take a look at it again. If two angles have equal measures, then they are congruent. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. It's literally the definition of being congruent is that they have equal measures. So yeah, by definition, this is true. Okay, so our original statement was true. I'll scroll up so you can see. On the top, we have our original statement. Our original statement was true. Then we wrote the, uh, what's called, the converse. And now we said the converse is also true. So original is true, converse is true. Is this biconditional? Uh, I guess so, right? Yes, you are right. It is biconditional because in order for it to be biconditional, you have your original true and your converse true. And that's exactly what we have. So yes, this is biconditional. Good job. All right. Let's keep going. Statement, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Is this true? You might not remember what vertical angles are. I'll draw you some. <laughs> okay, vertical angles are like, if you have two lines intersecting, vertical angles are the ones right across from each other. So those, blue, those two blue angles are vertical angles. Oh, my iPad just froze. Oh dear. <laughs> Is it? No? I don't know what happened. You guys can still see it, right? Oh my god. Okay. Um, give me a sec. All right. So I know you guys can't see it, but my, <laughs> my thing just froze. And now my iPad crashed. So what that means is I'm going to pause this video for a second. All right. So we are recording again. So what just happened? My iPad crashed. So I'm sharing with you the answer key instead. So we were on this question. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. What is the converse of this statement? So, wait, no, wait, we were on the statement, huh? We didn't say if they were true or false yet. Okay, so statement, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Is this statement true? The answer is true. When you have vertical angles, they are congruent.
I can hear someone talking, but you're really, really quiet. Can you say it louder? And also, I know that. This is weird. Uh, we've done a couple of terms making ice cream in the first ways in the past. I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Can you come closer to your speaker? <laughs> no? Okay, maybe you were talking to someone in your background. I don't see the video, so I can't tell. Um, anyways, the so statement, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. So I want you to put true. Okay, so this one's true. And you can see there's a check mark here. Okay, it's true. Oh, were we here? This one? This is biconditional, yes. No. Before? Yeah. This one is true. The converse of that statement was true. Okay. So now we're on. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. What is the converse of the statement? So we're going to say if, and then what was the conclusion? Wait, no, we, we did this one. Wait, no, no, we haven't done this one. Okay, it's a lot more confusing when I can't see like me typing it in with you guys. Okay. <laughs> if two angles are congruent, then they are vertical angles. Let me show you the words right here. This is the converse of our statement. I'm sorry I can't type it out with you guys anymore because my iPad crashed for no apparent reason. <laughs> so yeah, this one says, if two angles are congruent, then they are vertical angles. That is our converse. Make sure you put a period at the end. The one above this is true, right? Correct. Okay. All right, we're almost there. We're almost done. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next one. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Is the converse of this statement true? So this is our converse, right? We just wrote it. Is the highlighted text, is that true? Do they always have to be vertical angles? Or can they be maybe okay. part of a triangle or somewhere else? That's false. Good. This is a false statement. This converse that we wrote over here in blue, this is a false statement. So I want you to click false over here. Okay. So as you can see, false is the correct answer for this question. So the converse is not true. Our converse was false. Last but not least, if two angles are vertical angles and they are congruent, is this statement biconditional? Yes. So biconditional means the converse is true. Did we say our converse was true? No, we didn't. No, so it's not biconditional. I can't click it, but you can click it. <laughs> it is not biconditional. So biconditional is when your original and your converse are both true, but here we only have the original being true. Our converse was false. So immediately, since our converse is false, it is not biconditional. Okay? Okay, we're almost there, almost there, guys. <laughs> and I also know we have nine minutes left in class. I'm sorry that class does tend to go slower when we're online. I admit that. It's just because, like, you know, you can have internet issues, I can have internet issues. There's just, like, so many more things to deal with. But together, we will get through this. We are good. All right, statement. If the two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. Is this statement true? So by definition, perpendicular um, lines form right angles. So then, yes, this is true. It's literally the definition of perpendicular lines is that they intersect to form a right angle. So, yes, this is true. Now we have to write the 
Converse. Oh, I can't type it. <laughs> okay. I forgot I was about to type. So statement, if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. What is the converse of the statement? So we write if the conclusion, so if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then they are perpendicular. I know it's hard for me to like um, get your participation if I can't type it at all. But here you go. Here's a converse. But you guys were doing so well earlier. I have total faith that you guys are doing well now too. So if two lines intersect to form a right angle, then the lines are perpendicular. So all we did was switch, change the order. CO, change order, or the converse. Okay, now we're gonna analyze, is this converse true? If two lines intersect to form a right angle, are they, is it true? True. Yes, this is true. So, then over here when we ask, is this converse true? Yes, the converse is true. So we have that our original statement was true, we wrote out our converse, and we said our converse was true. So we got true and true. Is this biconditional? Yes. Yes, biconditional. And you can see biconditional is checked off as the right answer. It is biconditional because our original statement was true and our converse was true. Okay. Let's go to the last section. Okay. Which one? The last one, the one that said the lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right angle. What is the converse of the statement? Right here. Yeah, it's that one. The one that says, yeah. All right, let me know when you're done copying it. I'll take a sip of water. I know our internet kind of sucks sometimes, huh? I wish I could get a hotspot from my school, but they told me I can't because I'm not a student. <laughs> All right, are you done copying this one? Yep. Okay, let's go to the next section. Okay, so they say if BC is equal to 24, what is MN? So BC is this line, and MN is right over here. So remember that MN kind of cuts AB and AC in half. So it is a mid segment. MN is a mid segment. And the mid segment is half the length of the third side. So MN, right over here where my mouse is, this should be half the length of BC. They told us BC is 24. So what's half of 24? 12. 12. The answer is 12. Okay. So for this one, you want to just cut it in half. This is 12. All right, let's see if we can finish this in time because class ends in four minutes. <laughs> MN is 14. MN is right over here. This one is half the length of BC. So in order to get BC, you got to double this. 
28. Good. Double of 14 gives us 28. So this one's 28. So you can see it says 28 because MN is half of BC. BC is double of MN. So if MN is 14, you double it, you get 28. Let's go to the next one. They say this time MN is 32. What is BC? 64. Good, so you doubled it, that's good, because BC has to be double the length of MN. So you double 32 and you get, oops, sorry, 64. <laughs> All right, and then the last one, what is the measure of angle B? Okay, so here we have a triangle and it has one tick mark in every single uh, side, which means this is an equilateral triangle, right? Equilateral has three equal sides and three equal angles. So let me see, is there a way I can write something? Three equal sides, three equal angles. Aha, uh -huh, here's, a, here's a whiteboard. All three sides are equal. I also say all three angles are equal. I'm gonna call this angle X because they want us to find angle. They want us to find the angle measurement. So if all three angles are equal, then all three can be represented by X. So you can say X plus X plus X equals when you add up the three sides of a triangle, and this is in our notes, when you add up three sides of a triangle, you're gonna get 180. That's the rule for any triangle. So let's simplify this. This is x plus x plus x, that's three x equals 180. And now, to get x by itself, you divide by three, divide by three. Those cancel each other out. We get x is equal to 60. So any questions on this one? I know I'm kind of rushing it, but class is about to be over. No. Okay, let's go back to the original. Okay, and then as you can see, the measure of angle B is 60. Because technically, the measure of all of the angles are 60. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it for the notes. I want to end the recording. Which one is the first one?